Hi, welcome to Chat Communications Happenings and Trends. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, glad to have you back. Um, I want to make an appeal to you before I actually get started with today's segment. So at Actify, what we try to do or what our goal is, is to amplify voices of traditionally marginalized groups or disenfranchised groups in the United States. So that would include women, minorities, uh, religious minorities, etc. And so part of that, a part of the thing that makes me so happy about chat is that it is a 100% women produced and a hosted show. So this this whole spiel is run by women. And that makes me so proud to be able to say that because we all work really well together. Um, sometimes we're not always on the same page, but generally we find compromise. And I think that that's something that's very special about Actify Chat. Um, but with having said all of that, we have a lot of plans, big plans here for our channel. And that includes, you know, doing series um, to help amplify those voices, much needed voices. Um, one of which I would like to do is focus on healthcare and do a healthcare series specifically targeting um, the Southeast, where uh, many of the states did not take the Medicare expansion. And so, what you're seeing here is a lot of rural hospitals close. You're seeing a lot of people being uh, left out of the healthcare process, unable to get treatment, unable to get care because they cannot afford it. And it is a crisis, it's going to be a crisis here if it's not already. And so, I really would like to present that information to you, but we can't do it without your support. And what one of the ways that you can help support us so that we can bring you better content is by going to our Patreon page and donating a few dollars every month. Um, that way we can kind of up our game, give you information, show you kind of a large swath of the country you may be missing um, because you may not know these things are happening in certain areas of the country. Um, we're all spread out so we can all have a different perspective on certain things and get a, a decent amount of, of representation of the country and what it looks like. Um, another thing that you can do to help support us is just subscribe to our channel. Um, that really helps. It helps bring up our numbers and helps um, a lot of ways that we can start monetizing the channel, hopefully. Um, and you know, like our videos, reach out to us on Twitter at Actify Chat and just talk with us. We enjoy talking politics and we're happy to talk about any of the segments and stories that we've presented in the past or anything that you would actually like to see in the future and kind of have that discussion with us. Um, we, again, would love to have that conversation with you and do appreciate you guys supporting us and your continued support as well. And having said all of that, I'm going to go ahead and get into a pretty depressing segment, but it's about the Democratic Party, so we all get to be angry together, hopefully. So last week, The Intercept reported that uh, they received audio recordings of the House Whip. His name is Stinney Hoyer, Democratic House Whip, who, I guess, who tried to get or is advocating for a candidate to leave the race, a progressive candidate to leave the race in Colorado. His name is Levi Tillman. And they had a conversation about basically him, that the Democratic Party has already decided on who they will support and back. And by backing, they mean by throwing money at this particular candidate. And they have decided on Jason Crow. Now, this decision was made prior to anybody voting on the issue or to any of the voters having actually made any of the decision. They have already decided that they would like Jason Crow. Jason Crow is a veteran, which is great. It's nice to have veterans. You know, again, we get a different perspective, but he's a very centrist candidate, very safe. In, a, in, a, in an area where they continue to run centrist candidates as Democratic candidates, but losing to the Republican uh, candidate there. And so Levi Tillman could have a really good chance. He's a progressive. There is a populist wave uh, overtaking the country. There has been for a few years now. Um, and it seems like the Democrats don't seem to learn their lesson because apparently in this area of the country, they promise to remain neutral. 
but they have broken that promise and it is very clear that they have broken that promise now the intercept did reach out to them to try to uh, get their comments on i guess on their comments about having levi drop from the race and again they had nothing to say they would not comment on the issue so this is a pretty damning case for the democratic party because what we're seeing here is them showing favoritism for a candidate prior to, again, the voters making the decision. So they don't want the voters to make any decisions. They will select your candidate for you, and then you'll decide on that candidate. No wonder they don't vote for them. They lost over 1,000 seats under, under Barack Obama. They keep employing strategies like this. These are losing strategies. It almost seems at this point intentional. Like they have no intention of losing. Uh, excuse me, they have no intention of winning. There it is. So that brings me to another issue that I kind of have with the Democratic Party as a whole. And that is that they are paid to lose. They are paid to be weak candidates. And that is my perspective on the whole ordeal because they don't put up strong candidates. They don't have candidates with convictions. They, they do revert to, I hate to say it, identity politics. And I hate that word because our identity is so important to us. It, it, it shapes who we are as human beings. And in this society where identity does determine a lot of your outcomes, it makes sense to talk about those issues, but they use it like a crush, excuse me, like a crutch. They use those issues to, to try to gain some upper hand on their opponent when their opponent's like, well, can we talk about healthcare and how this is just isn't working? Even if they don't have ideas, just saying that the healthcare in the state that it is isn't working is enough because of their opposition. Because the opposition just goes, yeah, but did you know that we had a woman candidate? What up for her? She's a woman. Is that working? Does that work with anybody? I'm just curious. I mean, if maybe it works with you and if it does, tell us why, because I don't understand it and I would love to. Um, so that kind of ties into another part or another story from the Washington Examiner. Now I'm going to revert back to the old days of 2016 when WikiLeaks came out and basically um, released emails, the Podesta emails, about what is known as the Pied Piper strategy. And this was a strategy that the DNC, the DCCC, and the Hillary camp employed to basically elevate or rise a specific candidate that they felt that Hillary Clinton could easily defeat. And so what they did was they gave that particular candidate, and this was on the Republican ticket, Republican primaries. So they gave the Republican candidate that they felt Hillary Clinton could beat, um, free media attention, free airtime. It was a lot of free stuff that helped elevate that candidate into prominence. And that candidate happened to be Donald Trump. Well, apparently they miscalculated because at the same time, Hillary Clinton did not easily defeat him. He beat her. So that brings us to yesterday when the Washington Examiner reported, or excuse me, last week when the Washington Examiner reported about the Democratic Party utilizing a Pied Piper strategy in West Virginia. And so they're meddling in the GOP primaries there, trying to elevate candidate Blankenship. Um, hopefully I got that name right, um, because this candidate for that's running for Senate there on the GOP primary is has gone to prison for negligence in 29 minors deaths and so their their idea is that if we elevate that particular candidate then senator joe manchin could easily beat him right ah, y'all are crazy because of course that worked so well for hillary clinton didn't it besides um as far as i know there's a great progressive uh runner in that race her name is Paula Jean Swearingen, and I hope I got her name right. She is a native to West Virginia. She knows the area. She knows the people really well. She's very progressive. She is not getting any Democratic support. Um, but don't discount the Democrats to support a loathsome GOP candidate because they have made a super PAC for this man and are 
you know, donating money to this guy. So to help, you know, with with ads, run campaign ads, flyers, all that good stuff. So this kind of gives you a whole idea of how the Democratic Party kind of operates behind the scenes. So we know that they employed this strategy back in 2016. They're still doing it, even though it didn't work. It did not work, yet they're still doing it, which means that it has worked for them in the past, which means that who did they do this with? And I hope that our viewers can kind of do some digging and let me know, because I'm very curious to know who has, who, you know, who uh, else has benefited from this Pied Piper strategy and if it's actually worked for the Democratic Party to the same effect that I believe they think it has. Or maybe, just maybe, they're not in the business of winning. Maybe their business is assuring that they lose so that their donors remain happy because the donors love GOP candidates, love the GOP because they get a lot of tax breaks and they get to rule the country and fuck everybody else. Fuck all these minorities, fuck progressives and people that want, you know, to assure that Meals on Wheels continues as an operation. Fuck that noise, right? Am I right? Anyways, it's infuriating and so it could be a combination of two. Either the Democratic Party is okay with losing, and if that's the case, get the fuck out of the way, because let's make another party. Or they really think that this is going to work, and this ha maybe has worked for them in the past. And again, if you know of any solid evidence to support that this has worked for them in the past and who it has benefited, I would really like to know. And even if if you have evidence of them doing this in the past and it failing, I want to know who this benefited, which GOP candidate ended up taking the place of what they assumed would be a Democrat, Democratic seat because of this failed strategy. And so, again, it does give you kind of a highlight of how things are operating in the background. And I personally don't think the Democratic Party is reformable, but that's just me. Um, I had a conversation on Twitter about this, about if... You know, somebody like Bernie Sanders kind of decided to just say, OK, I'm done with the Democrats. Let's build our own party if if it would be viable. And I think it would. I think he has mass broad appeal to a variety of people, um, both Democrats and Republicans and independents. And I think that it would be very effective. I think people are sick of both the GOP and the Democrats. I really do. People see the GOP, and if you take my view, I think they, they are essentially terrorists. They are assuring people who die in the United States and abroad for their failed policies, and they know it. And they know it. Whereas the Democrats, they don't even try, <laughs> right? I, I don't even know what the Democrats stand for right now. They're the big tent party. They accept everybody but not progressives, don't, mm -mm, not progressives. So everybody but progressives are welcome. So I guess if you are the former, former ethics lawyer of George Bush, right? Iraq war guy who ethically shouldn't have started a, an illegal war with zero evidence and lied to the American people that they had evidence, that ethics lawyer now is saying that he wants to be a Democrat. No, the Democrat is now the Republican Party. We don't have a left-leaning party in the United States that has been obliterated thanks to special interest groups and big money donors. So the Intercept kind of out the Intercept article that I am referencing, and I will link it in the description below, kind of outlines a little bit about how the Democratic Party went from the party of labor to what it is today, the party of special interests, um, in a very kind of like little short segment while also detailing kind of the events that took place under with the recordings. It's a fascinating read. They do have the recordings that is on video and it will be linked with the article, and I encourage everybody to read it. And I don't want to stop here. I really want to continue the conversation, so please message us at Twitter at Active5 Chat and let us know what you think about these things and how you feel about the Democratic Party. Do you think that it should that we should form a third party, or maybe you find some redeeming qualities within the Democratic Party? And if so, you believe it's redeemable, I don't know. Um, but I'd like to hear your perspective on it either way. So please message us there, or you can comment in the comments below. I do read those comments, and sometimes I'll answer under my personal account. I'll try not to do that, um, so that you know it's actually Actified Chat answering you, your comments and questions. And uh, again, if you can support us in any way, 
And if you just liked this video, that would really support us. So please like the video if you did actually like it. And also subscribe to our channel because we, again, try to make content available to you every day. And except for maybe Saturday and Sunday, and sometimes we do release specials um, on those on the weekends. So please keep an eye out. Also, if you do subscribe to our channel, make sure that you hit that bell. You will get notified when we release a video for you. And with that, I hope to hear from your comments. I'll hopefully read through them. Hopefully you'll send them my way and I'll talk to you tomorrow.